Hey guys, in this video, I wanna give you a couple of tips for recovering from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So if you haven't yet already, definitely be sure to watch this video here where I talk about what SIBO is and what is the dominant cause for this condition. This is gonna be really important for understanding this video and moving forward. Otherwise, if you've already watched that video, let's just get right into some of the things you can do to start to regenerate the small intestine, to get rid of the overgrowth of microorganisms and bacteria in the small intestines. So that way you can start absorbing your nutrients again and getting rid of all the horrible symptoms associated with SIBO, like gas, bloating, pain in the abdominal region, skin issues, lethargy, fatigue, and many other symptoms. So if you watch the other video, then you already know that one of the dominant imbalances that is governing SIBO and all sorts of digestive issues is hypothyroidism. And this is simply because of the fact that low thyroid function is going to slow down not just the rate of metabolism, but also the rate of digestion. When you consider what hypothyroidism is, it's really a stress-driven condition. And when the thyroid is low, that means the adrenals are turned up and your body is in a stress state. And really, the last thing your body is going to be focused on when it's in a stressed or panic state is digesting food. So in a natural adaptive response, the body turns down the secretion of digestive enzymes and fluids, turns down the whole functioning of the digestive system, which otherwise requires a lot of energy to preserve energy to cope with the stress. So this is the simplified version or reason for hypothyroidism contributing to slow digestive function. And if you watch the other video, then you know that delayed digestive motility time, impartial breaking down of the food in the stomach, these are the dominant things that contribute to the overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Something else that's really important in regards to low thyroid function and recovering from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is the hormonal environment that takes place under hypothyroidism. So because the thyroid is what helps to oppose estrogen in the body and also to get rid of estrogen from the body, to metabolize it and export it from the body, it works with the liver in order to do this. What tends to happen in people with hypothyroidism is that they have a condition of estrogen dominance and a progesterone deficiency. And this can be problematic because when estrogen is really high, it can impair the regeneration processes of the body, which are really dependent upon the hormone progesterone that is otherwise opposed by estrogen. So under hypothyroidism, people tend to have a lot higher estrogen and lower thyroid and progesterone, and this can cause the intestines to become poorly regenerated. So in a condition like SIBO, the microvilli of the intestinal wall becomes damaged by the overgrowth of bacteria because as they're breaking down food in your intestines, they're producing inflammatory metabolites or metabolic waste that can damage the intestinal wall and this is how SIBO can lead to conditions like leaky gut. So in order to really recover from SIBO, the reason that it's so important you take care of the thyroid is to not only boost back up the rate of digestion overall and increase transit time and motility function and the secretion of digestive enzymes and fluids, but also to support the regeneration of what is probably an otherwise inflamed and damaged or leaky small intestine. And again, this is really not gonna happen if the thyroid isn't being corrected. So this is why taking something just like an antibiotic for SIBO isn't going to produce lasting long-term results. Even if you get rid of the bacteria that might be damaging your intestines and causing gas and bloating and discomfort, if you're not correcting the underlying low thyroid that caused the poor digestive function in the first place, then it's just liable to come back. But also if you're not correcting some of the dietary offenders to SIBO and you're just taking an antibiotic, it's also liable to come back. So with that in mind, the first tip that I have for you in correcting SIBO is going to be to correct the poor thyroid function. Now this is gonna involve many, many things because ultimately any form of stress can impair thyroid function. If you haven't yet, definitely be sure to watch this video where I talk about some of the uncommonly talked about causes of hypothyroidism. I think these ones are really important to consider when treating the thyroid gland because there are probably more dominant causes than the other things you'll find on the internet or that you'll be told. In addition to watching that video, definitely be sure to check out our healthy weight loss course where we have an entire thyroid protocol that will teach you how to heal your thyroid from a holistic point of view. Other than that, some of the general things that are really important to understand when treating the thyroid is to make sure you're getting enough calories, enough 
carbohydrates from the right types of foods so that way you can convert the inactive thyroid hormone into its active form that you're also reducing stress because stress can deactivate the thyroid hormone and that you're getting enough sunlight. These are very simple things that people tend to overlook, but they're some of the dominant causes of poor thyroid function. But in addition to watching that video, checking out the healthy weight loss course, adhering to some of these tips, I'm definitely gonna recommend for everybody that is suffering from poor thyroid function to consider taking the KSM 66 ashwagandha or something like holy basil which can on the short term improve the secretion of thyroid hormone and the conversion of it while also lowering some of the stress hormones that cause hypothyroidism. My second tip for you in terms of treating SIBO is going to be to take a look at the diet. Now there's a lot of dietary misinformation out there in regards to how to eat healthfully, but in regards to SIBO and good metabolic or thyroid function, some of the major things you're gonna to wanna to do is first and foremost, reduce your consumption of the soluble fibers. So consuming too many soluble fibers, like I've showed in other videos, is known to actually increase the risk for cardiovascular disease and digestive issues and even cancers because the soluble fibers are actually very difficult to break down for most people. We're not ruminant animals. We don't have four stomachs. We don't produce the enzymes cellulase to break down cellulose. So we can't really break down these really fibrous tough to digest foods like a cow or another ruminant animal could break down and also a lot of the soluble fibers tend to be things like grains or nuts and seeds a lot of the starchy foods that don't just have cellulose in them but also have anti-nutrients like lectins and phytates that make them very difficult to break down especially in an improperly prepared form. So generally removing the consumption of most soluble fibers and sticking to more insoluble fibers so fruits and vegetables being the primary source of your fiber would be a good place to go. But in regards to vegetables, again, a lot of these have cellulose and can be very difficult to break down. So avoiding your cruciferous vegetables, too many raw vegetables in general. If you have SIBO, I'll just remove raw vegetables altogether and instead focus on well-cooked root vegetables for a good source of fiber. So really well-cooked potatoes, consuming things like raw carrot. These are really good sources of fiber that will help to cleanse out the intestines without causing bacterial overgrowth that is otherwise caused by the starchy foods and the vegetables really rich in cellulose. Another thing I'm gonna recommend in terms of diet is that you increase your consumption of bone broth. And in fact, something I talk about and teach in the Perfect Digestion course is possibly going on a more liquid diet for a temporary period of time that is free of a lot of the fibers that can impair digestive function. However, the important thing you wanna do here and a mistake that a lot of people make is getting still enough sugars to promote adequate thyroid function and the conversion of T4 to T3. So going just on a bone broth fast may be very therapeutic and healing to the gut and may restore digestive function and reduce inflammation in the SIBO but if you do it for too long, you're gonna run into thyroid issues because you do need those carbohydrates to ensure you're not down-regulating the thyroid and going into adrenal stress-driven metabolism. So this is something that we talk about in the Perfect Digestion course, but the general piece of advice here is to make sure that although you wanna increase your intake of foods like bone broth, collagen, and gelatin, which have anti-stress effects, the ability to lower cortisol, rejuvenate and repair the gut, obviously they contain no fibers in them that could cause uh, gut fermentation, they have no tryptophan that could contribute to inflammation in the gut. So these foods are really therapeutic for many reasons in terms of gut health, but you're going to want to make sure that you're still getting a healthy source of carbohydrates. So maybe that's taking a couple tablespoons of honey or adding it to a digestive tonic or a tea or just consuming really ripe organic fruits that have been broken down efficiently and that way you're still getting those carbohydrates. So in conclusion, I think some of the most important things to do in correcting SIBO is to take a look at the cause, which is at the root level, hypothyroidism, but beyond that, poor digestive function, delayed transit time or digestive motility, and basically not breaking down your food properly in the stomach, which is causing it to ferment in the small intestine, contributing to the overgrowth of bacteria. But keep in mind, these are not all of the things that you could possibly be doing to correct SIBO. These are just some of the most prominent things and the most important things. Ultimately, if you correct the hypothyroidism, and as long as you're not consuming you know, really poor quality foods, if you're not consuming processed foods and junk foods, too many fibers, particularly the grains, the breads, the starches, anything with the polyunsaturated fats and the bad fats, and you're sticking primarily to a diet rich in organic whole foods that is mostly coming from 
a wide variety of organic ripe fruits, high quality animal proteins and fats, and a moderate amount of vegetables, but mostly well-cooked root vegetables with the exception of raw carrot for its antibacterial and colon cleansing properties, then you shouldn't be at least contributing to the further aggravation of the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So these are some things you're, you're gonna wanna take into consideration. But again, if you want to learn more in depth, uh, a thorough explanation, a full protocol for correcting SIBO once and for all, considering the fact that there are so many dominant factors involved in hypothyroidism, one of the underlying root causes, for example, mental and emotional stress being a huge, huge cause for digestive problems, if not the number one cause. So even if you're correcting your diet and you're eating a proper diet that isn't causing any sort of gut irritation or aggravation, if you're not correcting underlying stressors from a mental and emotional perspective or in any other area of your life, then you're going to probably always run into low thyroid function and your digestive system is just not going to be working as optimally as it could be. So I highly recommend checking out the Perfect Digestion course for anybody dealing with SIBO, but at least for now you have a better understanding of what this condition truly is and a better understanding of the most dominant causes of it so that way you can start to correct it at the cause level. All right guys, so that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested in learning more about how to heal your digestive system, if you're suffering from any sort of digestive issues whatsoever, remember, be sure to check out our Perfect Digestion course that you can find in our Online Wellness Academy in the description box below, where you'll also find links to our blog and tonic herb shop.